All across America, the Food and Nutrition Service, under the USDA, administers several nutrition programs that provide healthy, balanced meals to children in schools. Because these programs receive federal assistance, all sponsors must comply with federal civil rights statutes, regulations, policies, and directives. This civil rights video series will introduce you to the civil rights program, the legal authorities behind the civil rights rules for food and nutrition services, and the nine compliance areas. Civil rights requirements are intended to ensure that benefits of the National School Lunch Program, the Special Milk Program, and School Breakfast Program are made available to all eligible participants in a non-discriminatory manner. In this training, we will define and discuss civil rights and the different types of discrimination. We will also discuss two compliance areas of civil rights and school nutrition programs, complaint procedures, and written assurances. What are civil rights? Civil rights refers to the non-political rights of all persons in the United States. They are the rights of personal liberty guaranteed by the 13th Amendment and to U.S. citizens by the 14th Amendment and by other acts of Congress, such as the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Civil rights also refers to the protection against discrimination in the administration and delivery of federally funded school nutrition programs. Although it is the policy of USDA and FNS to provide fair and equitable treatment to all employees and program participants, specific civil rights laws prohibit discrimination in child nutrition programs based on race, color, national origin, sex, age, and disability. These are called protected classes. A protected class is a characteristic or factor such as race, color, national origin, sex, age, or disability, which is protected from unlawful discrimination by federal statute, executive order, and USDA regulation or policy. The civil rights regulations that are followed in school nutrition programs come from several program authorities. Some of these authorities include the Richard B. Russell National School Lunch Act of 1946, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972, the Civil Rights Restoration Act of 1987, and the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, among many others, some of which are listed here. You can see that there are many authorities that make up our civil rights regulations, but the grandfather of the legislation is really considered to be Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. What is discrimination? Discrimination is the act of treating or distinguishing one person or a group of persons differently from others, either intentionally, by neglect, or by actions or lack of actions based on a protected class. Intentional discrimination is referred to as disparate treatment. Intentional discrimination or disparate treatment in school nutrition could be any one of the following. Delayed receipt or benefits or services that others receive on the basis of a protected class. Denied benefits or services that others receive on the basis of a protected class. Restricting an individual in any way from any privilege enjoyed by others on the basis of a protected class. Or being treated differently than others to their disadvantage based on a protected class. Now let's look at some examples of intentional discrimination. Boys, boys, we have leftovers, come and get it. No, no, not the girls, only the boys. This practice would be discriminatory, even though the cafeteria staff did not intentionally discriminate, offering leftovers to only the boys means they were discriminating based on sex. If leftovers are going to be offered, they need to be offered to everyone. Necesito una aplicación de comida. I'm sorry, sir, we only have it in English. This practice is wrong. Either program information, including the free and reduced application, needs to be provided in the customer's language, or a translator needs to be provided to the customer to translate the program information. Oh, wow. Okay, sweetie, I'm gonna need you to go to the Spanish table, it's right there. This practice would be discriminatory. 
segregating or separating children who share a particular characteristic into groups would be discrimination based on the protected class of national origin. Not all discrimination is intentional. Discrimination may also occur when a seemingly neutral policy, practice, or procedure has a disproportionate adverse impact or effect on individuals of a particular protected class, and the practice lacks a substantial legitimate justification. This is referred to as disparate impact or disparate effect. An example of unintentional discrimination would be if a school lunch program is administered in an old school building that does not have a ramp installed for wheelchairs. This limits access of the school nutrition program from people who have a disability that requires a wheelchair. Though the school did not intend to discriminate, discrimination has taken place because of the disproportionate adverse impact on individuals with disabilities. Retaliation reprisal is another form of discrimination. Retaliation occurs when an individual is intimidated, threatened, coerced, or unlawfully discriminated against for filing a complaint of discrimination or participating or cooperating in a civil rights investigation, including agency employees. To understand the depth of the civil rights requirements in school nutrition programs, let's review the original legislation from Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. No person in the United States shall, on the ground of race, color, or national origin, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving financial assistance. What these words tell us goes beyond the obvious. Race, color, or national origin includes any perceived race, color, or national origin. Program or activity means all the operations of state and local governments, educational institutions, corporations and private institutions that receive federal financial assistance. In other words, school nutrition programs may not be administered in a way that would deny any individual any benefit provided under the program or that would restrict an individual in the enjoyment of any advantage or privilege enjoyed by others who receive benefits under the program. Additionally, programs may not institute policies or procedures which have the effect of subjecting individuals to discrimination because of their race, color, national origin, sex, age, or disability. If a program recipient feels that they were unlawfully discriminated against in the school lunch program, special milk program, or school breakfast program based on a protected class, they may submit a civil rights complaint. If someone feels that they or someone they know have received unequal and differential treatment in the operation of a school nutrition program based on a protected class, they may also file a civil rights complaint. Even if the complainant does not call their concern a civil rights complaint, it qualifies as one if it alleges unequal treatment on the basis of a protected class. Civil rights complaints may be verbal or written. Potential civil rights complaints may start as a phone call, letter, email, fax, or other form of communication. Civil rights complaints may be anonymously submitted. Complainants may submit civil rights complaints to the USDA, the Georgia Department of Education School Nutrition Program, or the local sponsor, School Food Authority. If a civil rights complaint is received at the local level, it must be forwarded to the Georgia Department of Education School Nutrition Program office within three working days. All civil rights complaints sent to the Georgia Department of Education shall be accepted and forwarded to the FNS Civil Rights Division or the Regional Civil Rights Director, FNS Southeast Region, within five calendar days. Additional procedures are required for complaints alleging discrimination based on age, regardless of whether other bases are alleged. The Georgia Department of Education must forward age complaints to the FNS Civil Rights Division or FNS Regional Civil Rights Director within five working days after receipt. The FNS Civil Rights Director will refer the complaint to the Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service, or FMCS, for mediation within 10 calendar days of the initial receipt. 
If FMCS mediation is successful, FMCS will notify the FNS Civil Rights Director so that the case can be closed. If mediation is unsuccessful, FMCS will refer the complaint back to the FNS Civil Rights Director. The director will investigate allegations related to age, as well as any other discrimination alleged in the initial complaint. Civil rights complaints should be filed within 180 days of the alleged discriminatory action. Although the Assistant Secretary for Civil Rights may waive this time limitation, so all complaints may be submitted. All civil rights complaints received by an SFA and state agency must be documented on a civil rights complaint log, separate from program complaints. The Georgia Department of Education, SFA and local sponsors must provide free, qualified, and competent communication assistance, other modifications or accommodations, and or alternative formats when communicating with individuals who have limited English proficiency, or LEP, individuals with disabilities, or individuals who are illiterate. Civil rights complaint information should include the name, address, and telephone number or other means of contacting the person alleging discrimination, the location and name of the organization or office that is accused of the discriminatory practices, the nature of the incident or action, or the aspect of program administration that led the person to alleged discrimination, the names, titles, and business addresses of persons who may have knowledge of the discriminatory action, the dates during which alleged discriminatory actions occurred, or if continuing, the duration of such actions, and the basis for the alleged discrimination. The USDA complaint form can be found online at the following links. Local forms may be developed if the forms contain the same information. However, using a complaint form is not mandatory. FNS must investigate complaints within 90 days. In summary, the civil rights complaint procedure is as follows. First, a civil rights complaint is received by the sponsor, either verbally or in writing. Second, the sponsor logs the complaint in the civil rights complaint log. Additionally, the sponsor gives the complainant the USDA civil rights complaint form or assist the complainant to complete the civil rights complaint form if necessary. The sponsor must offer and provide free of charge communication assistance for individuals with limited English proficiency and or with disabilities if needed to assist the complainant to complete the complaint form. If the complainant returns the civil rights complaint form to the sponsor, the sponsor must forward the complaint to the Georgia Department of Education School Nutrition Program within three working days. Confidentiality of the complaint is extremely important. Local sponsors are required to develop and implement their own written civil rights procedure to handle any discrimination complaint that may be received at the School Food Authority, utilizing the guidance included in this training. It's very important that all school nutrition personnel know what to do when a complaint is made. Aside from following the policies of handling civil rights complaints, school nutrition programs must also comply with specific civil rights directives. These include assurances. To qualify for federal financial assistance, the entity to receive financial assistance must provide a written assurance that states they will operate in compliance with applicable non-discrimination laws, regulations, instructions, policies, and guidelines. The National School Lunch Program, Special Milk Program, and School Breakfast Program operate using federal funds. Therefore, any entity receiving federal funds to operate these programs or assist in operating these programs must provide this written assurance. Where are these written assurances included? Written assurances are required in the following circumstances. The state agency's agreement with LEAs regarding the National School Lunch Program, Special Milk Program, and or School Breakfast Program, also known as the Permanent Agreement. Agreements or contracts between the SFA and vendors or retailers who will be paid with federal funds, including food service management companies. Agreements or contracts for online application services, language services, auxiliary aids and services, and outreach services and informal agreements with community-based organizations. All of these circumstances require appropriate civil rights assurance language in the contract or agreement. 
Additionally, with the exception of vendors or retailers, these agreements must state that the entity involved will compile data, maintain records, and submit reports as required to permit effective enforcement of non-discrimination laws, regulations, policies, instructions, and guidelines. These assurances are binding on the program applicant and its successors, transferees, and assignees as long as they receive federal assistance. FNS Instruction 113-1, Appendix B, Section D, contains the civil rights assurance language that must be incorporated into your contracts and agreements. If you have questions about what assurance language should be used in your contracts and agreements, please contact your area consultant. In summary, this training has reviewed the definition of civil rights and school nutrition programs, the laws that provide guidance for civil rights, the three types of discrimination, the civil rights complaint process, and written assurances. Here is a list of must-dos from the items we reviewed in this training. Offer the school nutrition program in a non-discriminatory manner. Develop and fully implement the sponsor's civil rights complaint procedure. Make the civil rights complaint forms, log, and complaint procedure available to all staff. Ensure free, qualified, and competent language assistance is offered to individuals with LEP, auxiliary aids, and services to individuals with disabilities, and other forms of assistance to individuals who are illiterate, who require assistance completing the complaint form. Ensure that contracts and agreements include the required civil rights assurance language. If you need additional information about civil rights and school nutrition programs, or links to civil rights documents, please contact the Georgia Department of Education School Nutrition Division.